yeah welcome welcome everyone so like uh, we are we are, we are just um, having a journey of aml uh, like end to end aml okay so we are very excited like we it is an year long program so yeah guys so we can jump into today's session actually like in the previous session we have just uh, learned about data structures in python so we have learned about list how to define the list how to access the list how to delete the elements in the list like those things okay and then we have learned about tuples guys okay so tuples is somewhat very closer to list but like it has some some different uh, features right and then we have learned about set so i will give a gist of it what we have just learned so what is a list guys so i'm i'm just recapping okay don't like think uh, i'm just going faster and we have done nothing okay because in the previous session we have done these things okay coding part of list tuples and then set we have seen. so what is a list guys list is the ordered collection of data where everything is mutable we can do anything we can improve like we can include modify delete everything you can do okay what is a tuple guys it is a vice versa of list we can say that like that right so um what we can do means in tuple they are immutable okay we cannot modify anything okay. then we have seen about set what is set set doesn't have any duplicate value it, it will not handle duplicate value it will not ask any duplicate values okay so yeah these are the three things that we have learned okay so today we are going to see one of the very very interesting data structure okay so before going further uh, uh, further like yes sir over to you so yeah, yeah. so the thing is these are yeah these are very important things guys absorb them and go and watch all the previous sessions 5 to 10 times so that you understand absorb and then you come to this session and also subscribe our channels so um we have learned list in the previous session we have learned tuple set and there are merits and demerits of all these data structures and now we are going to learn the python dictionaries okay so in dictionaries we create again dictionary like we create the data in data structure we create list we create tuple we create set like wise we create dictionary okay and then uh, uh, we have given the example name john age 22 course data science so this is how you create a dictionary and print original dictionary student so this is accessing the dictionary elements you can access adding the new key values pairs and removing the key values from from the dictionary you can do that so uh, this is how dictionaries are created yes yes actually sir has given a overview so guys yeah i think uh, the three different data structure we have seen now they have a unique use cases but i will say if you guys are able to understand this dictionary it gonna do lots of thing i will put it in this way guys um, just have a understanding how the real dictionary works okay you will be having keys that will be alphabets and will you will be going to search each and every words it will be in alphabetic order and you will get the meaning so consider the same way here the dictionary in a created in a way of key value pair okay consider here the student is a dictionary name equal to within the flower brackets we will be having key value pairs here name is the key value is the john and comma age is the key 22 is the value course is a key data science is the value so this entire thing is considered as a dictionary guys please 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 try to understand this if you guys have any doubt just mention in the comments we are here to help you okay so whenever there is a uh, uh, like a flower bracket within that we are uh, mentioning key value pair then it comes under the category of dictionary so this is how we can uh, like create or we can define a dictionary okay so yeah guys this is how we need to define dictionary now i'm just printing it you guys can see this is the original dictionary that we are having name age course these are the keys and for name we are having john age 22 and then course we are having data science case now how we can access a element from a dictionary okay i will put it in a simple manner guys i need to find the word uh, which is uh, called as aeroplane 
okay in the dictionary what you guys will do you will go to the dictionary you will find the key that is a within a we will be going for aeroplane and you will be finding the meaning right same way what we need to do means you need to consider the variable name student is the variable name and i need to find the name of the person in the dictionary i have the student which is the dictionary name within that i need to find the key so name is the key which will retrieve the name of the person okay so within the bracket uh, uh, like square brackets i am going to give the name now just see here it will return the john guys can you able to understand this is a not a complex thing it is a very simple thing but you can use it in a multiple ways guys okay so this is how we can access a element from the dictionary by using keys okay now how to add a new key value pair to the dictionary okay now i'm going to see say one thing okay my name is like a i, I don't think like um i know um, like this is a new name like karkavel raja I, i think how many of you guys can hear hear this one now i want to add this name to the dictionary what i need to do i need to add my name to the dictionary what i need to do because it is a new name i need to add it okay what do you guys will do i will see i will put it in a simple manner okay now you need to find a key my name is a key okay you just go to the dictionary go to the k part and i need to put my name karkavel raja and i need to put the meaning that's it right now i'm going to do the same thing here how to add a new key value pair i'm going to have a dictionary name now within that i'm going to give a new key name key name grade which is equal to value which is a okay so student grade which is equal to a now this is added to the already existing dictionary now we will be having age sorry name age course now additionally we are having grade now see here we are having name age course and one more thing we are having grade is it right guys now i'm going to remove okay consider i i need to remove my name from the dictionary what i need to do i need to go for k karkavel raja and then remove similarly here okay now we are having a dictionary a dictionary name like yeah here it is student okay now what i need to do means we are having student right now within that i need to specify the key that is age okay so student of age that is what i need to get so student of age it's a key okay age is a key now i need to remove that i need to use the del that is delete delete student of age now i'm going to display the dictionary now the age uh, key key value both the things will be gone we are just defining the age both the things will come key as well as value see here we are having name we are having course we are having grade but there is no age since we have deleted it okay yes sir over to you yes so this is how we can create uh, python dictionaries first you have to create dictionary you have to write student equal to parenthesis uh, noted commas you have to write name then uh, you have to write uh, name and then first name uh, and then age then you have to write which course he is in like suppose here we have given example of data science so similarly uh, we can access the dictionary elements uh, by printing the name and then adding a new key value pair which is like grade I, okay whatever you you can have that kind of thing you can add you can remove you can remove the key value pair age delete like as uh, uh, raja has already deleted delete student age so you can get it so you can do kind of uh, manipulation in dictionary also you can create dictionary you can remove you can add so this is how you can create dictionary it's very simple so yeah so ex simple explanation dictionary is a collection of key value pairs allowing you to map unique keys to the values that's it. okay um i think we have covered data structures guys okay guys please 
make notes of the points that I'm going to say now. Okay. So, like Python has a unique way of storing the values, okay, data. First thing we are having in a data structure is list. It is the ordered collection of data and they are mutable. And we will be representing it by the square brackets, right? I hope you guys are like noting it down. So, next we are having tuples. Tuples are ordered, but they are immutable and they are created by using circle brackets. Okay. Then we are having set. Set is the unordered collection of data. It can be in any order. And it is represented by flower brackets. And they are mutable. Okay. You can you can change the values. Okay. Now. But what is the thing? Set cannot have the duplicate values. Now the final thing. Dictionary. Okay. What is dictionary? It has a key value pair. Whenever you need to uh, like uh, access anything, you need to go for the key. So it is also defined by using uh, flower bucket, but you will be having key value pair. Okay, guys. I hope uh, this concept is very clear for you guys because like why I'm just insisting why we are just doing these things means because like I think previous uh, like last two say two or three sessions will be like this Python coding only very basic. What is variable? How the data types are declared? How the uh, Python will read the data type, what are the operators we are having, how the condition statement works, looping statement works, what is the function, uh, how the data structures are uh, created. Thing is, before going for A or building of model creation, you guys need to know each and every nuances. Okay. Each and every scratch things you guys need to do. So that's the reason that this is your foundation, guys. This is your yeah. foundation. So if your foundation is strong, you can build a thousand stories on it. If your structural foundation, knowledge foundation is weak, so you will not understand what is dictionary, what is list, what is tuple, what is set. So when you don't know, when somebody comes and starts teaching you or you are going to make, you will be frustrated that what, what is this? How am I? You, everything will look like same for you. But everything is different and it is objective function is very different. Each and everything has merits and demerits and where to use, how to use. You need to know from a meta meaning level and we are focusing on fundamental meta meaning level learning so that you understand. Go watch all the sessions for five to ten times. Absorb all the previous then come to this session and subscribe to our channel for a deep one year long program wherein you are going to learn data science ai ml end to end at noble transformation hub if you have any questions write at connect at noble transformation hub.com and also write in the comment section what have you learned how you're going to implement and if you have any feedbacks write about us so that each session we improve and uh, we provide great experience we are enjoying are you enjoying write in the comment section yeah, guys. So as Sarah is mentioning, it is going to be a year-long program, and I am enjoying a lot. Like we are enjoying a lot. Okay. So I think we can move further. Okay. So yeah, guys. This is what data structures we are having. Okay. Now, advanced functions. Okay. Now, what we gonna do here means we gonna see. Uh, what to say? Now I will say. Uh, before that we have seen level two. Now it's just level three. Now, please, please make notes of this kind of functions. Now we're going to learn. So default arguments in functions. Okay. Consider this lines. Def is a keyword which is used to define the function. We're going to see the advanced function. And greed is the name of the function. Within that, I'm just giving two different parameters. See here, name and then message. Message is already, it's a, a parameter which is defaulted by the value called as welcome apostrophe. Okay, it is a default parameter, but we need to pass the value for name. Now, return hello name. What is the value you, uh, you provide? It will be that, and message is the welcome. Now, when I call this function, what happens means Alice will go here because already message is welcome. Name is Alice. So whenever you pass this, what are the variable which just has a value? It will take the value. 
so now the name is alice hello alice message that is hello alice welcome you guys see here okay now now i just able to call bob this will go here right name now good morning where it will go it is a first parameter it is a second parameter already we have passed the first parameter and the second parameter is already defaulted to the value of welcome now i am just reassigning the value of welcome by this good morning right it will go here now the message is good morning name is bob hello bob good morning right that will be the answer see here hello bob good morning right so like it is not a tricky consider this, ma this manner we are defining a function with some parameters defaulted to some uh, some value now for this function to execute we require at least only one parameter only because we have already defaulted with some other para parameters with some default value so now to execute this function we need the value for name if we give the value for message it will be appended on the message value that's it so this is what the default arguments in parameters yes sir over to you yeah again when we go for functions advanced functions in python so we understand these things like the argument it's always like you have again i'll have the simple um, architect which is input function in the black box and output so this is you need to always consider this so uh, input is always like we give uh, we have to define the greet as we have defined the message welcome then uh, return hello like then we are calling the function so we are printing uh, print greet alice and then print greet bob good morning so we get the outcome which is hello alice welcome hello bob good morning so you have two arguments here so if uh, the outcome would have been only hello alice welcome so then uh, we'll say it's just an output of function but here we have two things two arguments which is hello alice welcome and then hello bob good morning so these are two arguments uh, with the uh, default arguments in function which we uh, do and then we do calling the function and input uh, function black box it happens inside and then you have output Yeah, actually, that's great. Okay. Yeah. Now, we are going for next function. That is the lambda function. Okay. Guys, see here, I will say one thing. This is a function. Can you guys be able to believe this? <laughs> like in the C, C++, Java, we will be writing n number of lines for functions, right? Now, I'm, I have highlighted one thing, though. No? Lambda x colon x star x in some other function it will be like nearly three to four lines okay see here how much code reduce here how many lines of code is reduced just to one line instead of three to four lines it is just one line so it is a square function right square is the function name equal to lambda is a keyboard now to create an anomalous, anomalous function x is a variable where it will has a value of x star x that's it now in order to call this function we need to just give the function name and we need to pass the value like 5 so 5 is a 25 that's it guys. so it is like a like you need to use this function whenever it required guys think of in this manner if you are writing a code which is need to be like compressed a lot like you need to have a reduce the code line okay um, like instead of three line i need a one line then you need to use this kind of anomaly function that is lambda functions okay so this is like when when i am looking in the first time i doesn't able to understand what this lambda is doing because like how a function can be a single line okay it has reduced nearly three lines to just a single line okay uh, so i i very surprised when i'm seeing this lambda function okay it is like a normal function but it is, it is called as an anomaly function it is like a single line function yes sir over to you yeah so guys again uh lambda function suppose so when i see this function and uh, this code 
I see time and space complexity reduction. So when you're writing with simple functions, you reduce the time and space complexity, which is the objective of your project and your coding. So with these functions, we can reduce time and space complexity, which is a huge and it's a powerful function, you will say. That's why we call Python as a powerful tool because of these functions which we'll use and it makes it powerful very simple very powerful and you don't have to write write n number of lines of code and uh, time and space complexity is very good and that is why the explanation is default arguments provide default value if none is provided lambda functions are small anonymous functions so uh, but my observation is time and space complexity is very very uh, it is optimizing the function uh, uh, operation which is like space and time complexity is a objective function of computer science whenever you are designing any program any algorithm any uh, software any application time and space complexity is a key objective which you need to consider when you are going for the project and with these functions you can do that okay actually like i have forgotten these two key terminologies i should not done that because like as a csc student we need to have an idea of what is time complexity and space complexity so whenever like uh, we are having huge number of lines and more loops then it will gonna take more time and also space this case but see here we are having just a line as sir is explaining is gonna take very 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 much less time and space complexity when compared to the ordinary or default um, user defined functions or normal functions we are having okay like uh, i think now you guys can understand why we are just moving to python so python has uh, like in the like in the first session of uh, our python language introduction we have seen python can itself understand what is a data type you just need to implicitly declare integer float this is character this is string this is boolean no it can itself understand that itself it has removed a space of storing the data type now see here instead of three lines of code now we are having a single line of code it has reduced the time and space okay so i think 2x, was, uh, 2x time saying, 2x time almost 2x space that's a that's yeah. a huge uh, huge optimization in the function of the code it's it's and if you understand this part 80 percent computer science you understood time and complexity time and space complexity is the objective function like you will always write code which is optimized to space and time complexity yeah actually like that's the thing okay yeah guys like these are the different things which makes this python unique and like usable by everyone okay so i think we have we have done with this session okay like now now the major thing guys uh, we have done today like i think we have seen about uh, some special functions and also we have seen about dictionary now we going to go for a live assignment guys okay i hope like last assignment session is very fun and you guys are able to do the assignment because we have given an assignment on order even we need to write a function for order even now we are having an assignment guys live assignment for you guys okay now what is an assignment question you need to write a python program to count the occurrence of each word in a given string okay yeah guys like yeah sir uh, how much time we can give for this question sir so write a python program to count the occurrences of each word in a given string let's give them three minutes uh, they can do in less time that would be against yeah. time uh, complexity they can work on time optimization so uh, and, uh, yeah three minutes is enough and you have to submit uh, your assignment in the comment section also you can write uh, in connect at noble translation hub.com so you can write to us uh, but this these don't uh, yeah if you have if you have just coming to this video session just go and watch five to ten times all the previous sessions and then come here and do the assignment and then let us move on and uh, the implementation of knowledge is the key 
key to success and uh, here we believe in 80 percent implementation of your concepts and 20 percent of concept clarity deep concept clarity at a meta level meta um, um, meta learning you have to do not the surface learning here at noble transmission hub so let us do it yeah guys like yeah we need you guys to answer this assignment okay and i have a surprise guys today okay i'm gonna reveal the answer i have an answer okay so we will give three minutes guys in the meantime like you guys just try okay and then as sir is mentioning you just write to us write it in the comment now i'm gonna show the answer for you because like previous session i i don't think like we have just shown the answer now uh, since you guys are gonna be very enthusiastic with these things i'm gonna show the answer for this question yeah guys i think there is two more minutes more okay so the assignment question is write a python program to count the occurrence of each word in a given string guys okay yeah guys like we need we we need to answer this question because like it is very it will be very very easier we have learned about everything what is operator what is the data type how to input the things output output the things we have learned about all the kind of functions and we have learned about data structure now it's gonna be nothing for us we need to just find the occurrence of each word in a string that's it okay yeah guys one more minute guys guys please post like uh, whenever we are teaching you guys need to work on it okay then only I, we you can learn okay so as we are teaching we are learning every day okay so whenever you just try you you guys gonna learn okay so yeah just just, just i think 13 13 seconds more so let's see how many of you guys gonna solve this okay and i'm gonna reveal the answer guys for you for you guys So I think we can go for the countdown from 10, okay? So that is only like 10 more seconds. So five, four, three, two, one. Hope you guys have completed this assignment. So this is very simple. So I'm gonna reveal the answer for you guys, okay? See ya guys. So before don't don't think this complex i'm gonna ex explain you guys very separately but before that just see here what are the things i have done i have used a function right i have used a loop right i have used the conditional statement i have used the function call okay function call now i will just explain the flow i am defining the text as hello world hello what is our end goal we need to count the occurrence of each and every word in a string our string is hello world hello now hello is two time world is one time that's it okay i'm gonna pass this st uh, string here now text dot split what it will do means it will split the string based on the gap hello will be first then we will be having world second will be hello now what is the first thing hello now we're gonna print hello right it will print the hello now for hello we will be having the first value as hello word in hello we need to consider if it is in count count is we are initializing to the empty first of all there will be nothing now what we need to do means count of word what is the first thing hello we need to add a value of one so now within the count we will be having hello whose value is one now what we need to do means what is the next thing world now we are going inside now here is there will be world count zero like nothing is there if world in words already we are having like words will be having the next thing like what will be the next thing world now world will be not already in the dictionary so now we it is gonna create that so hello is one time world is one time till this now the next thing will be hello which is already there if it is already in the count we just need to increment 
okay so whenever the first time guys guys i will put it in a simple manner so this is a string we are having we are just passing here and we are just splitting it here so we will be having unique values hello world uh, like uh, hello okay that's it we will be having these words now i'm gonna iterate through this first of all we will be having hello so hello is will be not in the count initially there is empty thing okay so i need to go here count of hello is one first of all hello is one next world so world will be not in count so count of world will be one so now we are having count of hello is one count of world is one name now we are having again hello hello is already there so hello will be in count so the else statement will not be executed now if statement will be executed count of hello already there is one i need to just add one more that's it so hello is two time and then world is one time so i hope you guys have different ways of approach for this uh, question so everything will be right guys only thing you need to get an answer for how many occurrence of words in the string that's it guys so i think hope that i have just able to implement all the things that i have just teach uh, for the past two sessions like the last session and today's session so i think uh, sir can explain this in a better manner i think so yes sir over to you sir yeah so again uh, what we have done is uh, we have defined the word count text so we have to define that specifically word uh, is equal to text dot split we have to use this function and print word count we have to give the parenthesis and for word in words we have to write that plus equal to one because uh, we have to define it and for if for and then if then else conditional statement and then we get the uh, return count so we have to do that we have to tell computer because computers are deaf uh, dumb so you have to define each and everything uh, and uh, in their own language whatever they understand and then the test function we have to write text equal to hello world hello okay then it uh, we have to uh, ask again to print the word count um, okay uh, text then uh, we got the hello world hello world two we have hello two times and word one time so this is how the uh, the question write a python program to count the occurrence of each word in the given string so here what we have to do is i think we need to give them uh, some kind of um, uh, that hello world hello as a to count the occurrences or uh, they can you can also take from your uh, end you can take such words and then you can use it so you have that freedom for this question or you can use hello world uh, you can just try again try 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 and uh, practice is the key to become an excellent programmer and learn the language of programming whatever language it is practice is the only key you have to practice with these such questions so that you will uh, you will be expert yes guys uh, yeah i will take uh, two or three more minutes i'm i'm going to uh, give you guys whatever the things that we have learned is in the in this program okay variable this text equal to text is a variable which stores the value of string right we are not defining the data type it itself that text is itself considered it as a string now what is the next thing we are having loop i have explained this before itself we are having the conditional statements now we are having the function right and here we are having the function call okay so guys this is a reason guys we we have just coming from the scratch this is a reason we have now we know each and every part of this code if i directly jump to this code you guys will be thinking what this man is saying okay so yeah so that's the reason like we are just uh, creating this course in a manner that everyone can understand guys okay hope you guys have enjoyed this okay try to uh, use with different inputs as sir is mentioning like try to use different inputs come up with different uh, kind of solutions and just fingers in the comment section okay so 
hope you guys have enjoyed the session we are enjoying a lot so yeah guys if you till now if you guys doesn't subscribe to our channel please subscribe to our channel so yeah guys so so is there is there anything else that you need yeah to so that is very so do a lot of iterations and understand each and every element of the exercise uh, the whatever we've taught you l learn from meta level and uh, then um, uh, uh, you will be an expert in data science ai ml and ai scientist or uh, data scientist so whatever objective function you have for your career so uh, when you have deep you enjoy the process enjoy each and every element of this course go and uh, study uh, all the previous sessions five to ten times and then come to this section and uh, this session and also keep learning absorbing and do a lot of iterations a lot of practice then you will become an expert so that's it from the session keep learning and write in the comment section what have you learned how you're going to apply and whatever program projects you are doing just write in the comment section we'll help you out and uh, subscribe to our channels thank you so much yeah guys take care we will be seeing you in the next session thank you thank you everyone